Welcome to the Brass Head Woodwind Shop. This is the fifth video in the Building a Slide Trumpet series. I'm going to start today by cutting the inner slides to length and making sure that this instrument plays in tune. To do that, I need to make sure that there's a right length of tubing. I'm going to lay out these parts the way that they would go together, and then I'm going to measure things. I already measured it, but I want to measure it again just to make sure that everything is right. Let's see, that one goes there. And that one goes there. And there needs to be a little bit of gap between there because that's where the cork barrels go and there needs to be cork inside of there. Okay, and then the bell is going to go right on there. And it's going to hook onto the slide tube when it's together. So it's going to go right up to there. So now I'm going to measure this out. I do not need to measure the slide tubes and the lead pipe because those are going inside of there so they do not add any length to the tubing. I'm going to measure from here to here. Then the mouthpiece is about two inches so that's a little short of 18 and a half inches. And this is, let's see, this from here to here is 16 inches. So 18 and a half plus 16 is what, 34 and a half. And the crook is two and a half, so we're at 37 right now. And the bell, 37 right, right here is 13, so that's 50 inches to right there. So I'll finish up by measuring the rest of the bell. That looks like it's about seven and a half, so that takes us to 57 and a half inches, and we need to be about 55 inches. So I have to remove two and a half inches of tubing. I, want, I do not want to remove any of the bell if possible, and I do not want to remove any of the slides. So I'm going to have to remove the two and a half inches from here, and also possibly from, a little from the crook. I'm going to start by removing a little bit of tubing here, and I'm not going to remove the full two and a half inches, because I don't want to remove two and a half inches and find out I took too much off. So I'm going to start by taking off a little bit, and then I'm going to play it and see how in tune it is. This tool will not work too well because I'm going to be up too close to this, so I'm going to have to cut it with the jeweler saw. I recently did a video on how to cut metal for instruments using a jeweler saw. I was surprised at how popular the video was and how much discussion there was. I have used the jeweler saw quite a bit for cutting on musical instruments, but I think some jewelers watched the video. Some of those people also may be band instrument repair technicians that have more experience using a jeweler saw than I have, so I'm going to try some of those suggestions and see how they work. Someone suggested putting beeswax on the blade. I'm not sure how you do it. I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, there's a little bit of beeswax on there. And someone else suggested instead of cutting it like this, that I cut it horizontally like this. So I'm going to try both of those and I will see how that works. For this tubing, since it's so thin, I'm using a fine blade with the teeth really close together. Someone else also suggested putting masking tape around it, and that keeps the blade from wandering and also it, it gives it a cleaner cut because there won't be as many burrs on it. I'll give all these three things a try and we'll see what happens. I want to cut it about right there. About the halfway point is where the blade grabs the most. And it is grabbing a little bit, but it seems to be working well. Once you get a little bit beyond the halfway point, it usually smooths out and the cut is a lot easier. Okay, it's almost through. I did not break any blades yet, so that's good. A lot of times I may break a blade while doing this. And this is, the, I think, the finest blade, or close to it at least. And I did not break any, so that's good. There we go. I'll take the tape off. I have removed, let's see, about three quarters of an inch of tubing. So I have one and three quarters left. But I'm only going to cut off about one more inch before I start to play it and see if it's in tune. I've cut three of the pieces of tubing so far, and I just broke my first blade on the fourth one. So I'm going to have to replace the blade. But that's pretty good. Usually it wouldn't take that long to break a blade, so I guess that did pretty well.
While I'm at it, I'm going to measure these pieces of tubing that I took off of there. Looks like about one and a half inches. So I'm removing the old blade and I'm putting on the new one. Okay, that's ready to cut. I'm going to put some uh, beeswax on there. And I will continue cutting. When I'm done cutting this, I take my tone hole file, which is usually used for saxophone tone holes, but you can use it for a lot of different things. And then I file this to straighten it out and to clean it off and get rid of the burrs. When I'm done with that, there are still some burrs on there, so I clean that up with a triangular knife. There are other tools that can clean these up, but I don't own those, so I just use a triangular knife, which works well. And then I use the file just to clean up the rest of the burrs on the outside. Okay, that's good. Now I have two shortened pieces to hold the inner slide together, and I took that much tubing off, which is about two inches. Now it's time to put this thing together and see if it plays in tune. But I'm not going to solder it right now. I'm just going to hold it together with tape and whatever else just to see if it is in tune. The last thing to do before I check to see if this is in tune is to cut down the sides. Now what I need to do is put these parts onto here and the slide tube goes right up to the end like that. And I need to leave a little bit of room for the cork to go. And I'm going to cut it a little bit longer than that because I want room to be able to cut it down if I need to. I do not want to cut it too short because it's hard to add on. It's easier to take off than it is to add on. I'm making sure that this is lined up. There's a little bit of gap there. And then I'm going to add a little bit on. So I'm going to cut it right there. This is the side of the inner tuning side that the lead pipe and the mouthpiece go into. I got the cutter set up and I'm going to cut the tubing. This side of the slide is ready to go together. Now for the side of the slide that attaches to the bell. And I need to make this one a little bit longer because I need to leave room for the bell to go onto here. So I'm going to factor that in when I do the measuring and the cutting. I'm going to put the slide onto there, line that up, and then line up the other part. I don't even know what to call this thing, really. It probably has a name, but I don't know what it is. And then I'm going to leave some room for the belt to go onto. I'm actually going to leave quite a bit to start with, so I have some room to cut it down if I need to. So I'm going to cut it right there. And then I'm going to cut it with a tubing cutter. Okay, I am taping an instrument together. Yes, I don't usually do that. I'm a little embarrassed to say I'm taping an instrument together, but I am. Usually I spend my time removing tape from instruments, and tape removal is a lot of times a lot more difficult than you may think, because sometimes it gets stuck on there really good, and you spend oh, quite a bit of time removing tape. But here I am, taping it together. Okay, now you have to tape on the crook. And yes, this is not parallel, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. This is just for tuning purposes, and that's it. Okay, so that's taped together. Now I'm going to slide these out a little bit for the, the space for the cork. And I'm going to tape those together. Next, the lead pipe goes in there. It's not going to fit because I just tapered it in with a cutting tool. So I need to I need to expand that. Not exactly expand it, but it, um, bring it back to where it was before. So the way I do that is 
tighten up the side expander right up until it's even with here. Then I'm going to pull it out and that should make it cylindrical again. Let's see if that fits in there. That's wrong direction. That's better. Okay. The lead pipe is in there. I'm going to leave that out about a half an inch and that's for tuning purposes. And someone asked how I'm going to tune this. If I'm going to do it on the bell section or the lead pipe section. Probably the lead pipe, but I'm not even totally sure yet. But I'm going to leave it right there for now. And put the mouthpiece in. Put the bell on there. Okay, now I'm going to play this thing. I won't be able to slide it in and out, but I will be able to tell if it's in tune in the first position. And my wife came to the shop and brought her toner, and it's uh, on her phone. And for you guys, it's probably normal, but I will have to say I'm very low tech, and this is new for me. So anyway, I will give that a try and see what happens. Okay, let's try it. Okay, here we go. Um, this, is, this should come out as a B flat. <laughs> Okay, if I lip it up, I can get to the B flat, but I really have to try hard to lip it up. So it's lower, so I need to push the slide in. I am going to push the lead pipe in more. Oh, there. oh. Well, that's, that's okay. Uh, this is just for tuning purposes. Oh, well, let me do this, though. It's right up against my face. I can't see what it is there. It's about done. I can lip it up and lip it down to get either direction. I'm going to play the other notes. That's that F. Yeah, it sounds supposed to be an F. Oh, um, oh, that, yeah, it's transposed. That's right. I forgot about that. It's a G, but it's transposed to an F. Okay. That's pretty close. I think we got it. So this is in tune, so I'll have to work on the lead pipe a little bit. I'll probably cut off the rest of that. But I think we're good. So now all I need to do is cut off that little extra section there, because I wanted to leave a little extra, because you know, it's easier to cut it off than it is to cut it on. And then I think we're ready to solder this together. That's exciting. Now I'm going to pull it out to seventh position and see if we can get that low uh, G sharp, which will be an F sharp on the tuner. Let's see. If it said E, I'm trying to think. It was think between here. E and F. Okay. Okay, we need a, I'm trying to, to transpose in my mind here. So if it's the low G sharp, shouldn't it be F sharp? I think so. I don't do this enough. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think here. My brain's not working. Um, so if I pull it out more. So I got the low, that was this little e. e. So that would transpose to they're transposed in F-sharp, so the little E. So, okay, so, so here it's good, so we're good. So I think we... Okay. So you're yeah, that leaves about two... Yeah, I think we're good. So you're transposing a step and a half. No, we need to transpose this one whole step. Well, an E and an F... Let's see. E to F. Oh, right, E to F-sharp. So, right, so, e right, so e we're to good. F-sharp, yep, you're good. So we're good. So the seventh position, that leaves enough room for the slide to hold on to. And good to go. Let's solder this thing together. But that is for next Friday's video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.